Hey everyone, it's Adam here. I've been getting a lot of emails um, daily on setting up your charts exactly like I have them in the live trading room. So today's video is just going to be like an education video on how to set up and get uh, your work environment kind of like mine. Um, you'll see on, on one monitor I will have my actual live trading to where I have a 21 range and then a 233 tick where I actually execute orders. Um, on another monitor, I will have a setup something like this and potentially a, a couple more grids depending on what I'm looking at. I'll hone it in depending on each day. Uh, but this is what I'm going to set up today for you guys and I'm going to show you how to, how to set it up and get it like mine so you can have like an overlook of all your markets. Whether you have you know two markets or four markets or six markets, it doesn't matter. I'm going to get it set up to where you can have yours look a lot like mine. And just, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm looking at. As I can look over here at another monitor, I can see, hey, ES is rolling down. The, uh, the TF, the Russell here, is fairly flat. So I can observe just from this grid, zoomed out a little bit, of if I'm interested in that market or not. So, I mean, as you can see, I have trigger lines that I have moving averages that are all pointing down here on the ES. So ES may be... Maybe something to take a look at here. This may be a, you know, a check to the yes and this here. As you see all the trigger lines, all the moving averages are kind of in here like spaghetti. That is a, a big no-no. So um, this may be just a, a way for you to just get an overlook of the market and uh, see if, um, you know, if, if, if there's something starting to trend that you may want to take. Then obviously I have all the internals on another monitor over here, but uh, that's for a different video. So I'm gonna set up a grid and then uh, whether you're using Thinkorswim or just some other charting platform, it doesn't matter. Um, you can accommodate and uh, get your setup similar to mine. But if you do have Thinkorswim, this is gonna work really nice. If not, at least you're gonna get the idea of what I have and then you can implement it on your own charts. Every indicator I'm using is um, basic. So there's absolutely, um, um, there's no hidden hidden code or none of that. This is all stuff that you can get on any free charting platform. So start out here. We're going to have four grids just for today's purposes. I'm going to get rid of the sidebar. If you got Thinkorswim, guys, just get rid of these sidebars by clicking on this little wrench up here, getting rid of sidebars, and we're good to go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to create one, and then I'm just going to copy it for the other three. That's what's nice about Thinkorswim. You can go ES over here, say we'll go Russell up here, gold down here, and let's put um, our crude down there, let's put gold down here. So the main four that I trade, uh, obviously we can throw in the euro, the yen, some other things like that, uh, but let's do these four um, for the purpose of this video, and let's create one of them. So we'll go up here to style. We're going to create a, uh, you know, an intraday chart, but we're going with a tick chart. I'm going to make all these tick charts, 233 tick charts, and then we're going to put the moving averages so you guys can have just an overview of the whole deal. This video may go a little bit long, but it's going to get the point across, and it's going to be a nice setup for you guys just to hone in on each market. So I'm going to do tick, and like I said, the nice thing about recording this, you guys are going to be able to go back and review um, what I did. So I just basically made a five-day 233 tick chart. That's all I did, guys. And up here, I'm going to change it from a bar chart to a Heikinashi candle. If you have that, wonderful. If you don't have that option, you're just going to have to use a candle chart. No patterns are the same, though. Heikinashi, and you're going to see how they work a little bit differently here in a second. And then I'm going to go to my settings, style, settings. And I'm going to start at the beginning here. Crosshair, synchronized going, no, 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 and no. Let's go to price axis. Just leave it as is. We're going to make this very, very quick and basic, guys, here. Uh, expansionary, the only one I'm going to add here is 25 to the right. That allows uh, to have a little bit of space to look at the chart on the right side there. Move over to appearance, uh, border up, green, down. Let's just leave it all as is, guys. Um, show Wix, yes. We want to make the background here black. If I'm going a little bit fast. You can always go back and pause this and redo it. All I did was went to appearances, 
chart type, Haikanashi, bars are green, so on and so forth. Background here, black, and then I'm going to get rid of this grid, these lines here. Now if I hit apply, you're going to see something start changing. Alright, now we're starting to get somewhere, guys. And then we got to go over to futures, because this is a futures market, and I don't have any use for volume. I'm using tick charts. I already know how fast I'm trading. So show volume subgraph, get rid of that. And show extended session, leave all this. You don't need to show open interest. But, so that's it. Hit OK. And now we got a nice plain chart here, guys. Nice plain chart. Now we're ready to start adding some studies. Studies, edit studies. And I'm not putting the lower MACD and stochastics on here because I just want to get the overall direction of the market because we're just looking at the big grid here. I want to get the direction of the market so then if I want, I can blow up that chart and then look for actual trades. This is just an overview, get you uh, mentally uh, prepared for what you're getting ready to see. Um, I'm not going to put in any of my custom colored uh, moving averages or any of that. I'm going to make it basic so everybody can, can, uh, can actually use this setup and get going. They're all going to be exponential, so I'm going to do four exponential moving averages, guys. First one, I'm going to make eight. And I like to make it nice and white. Apply. Second one, I want 21. So 8 and 21. And then we're going to go 50. All exponential. And then 200. All right, guys, not too bad, right? Everybody can see that? You have the 8, 21, 50, and 200 exponential moving averages. Hit OK. So now we got a nice clean chart there, don't we? A nice clean chart there, guys. And that's it. I don't want to do too much more. I just want to get the general gist of it. So now if you have thinkorswim, we can go right down here, save style. And let's call it something like... Um, 233 tick and moving averages. That's it. Something basic. And a lot of trading platforms allow you to save grids. But just save it, include steady so the so the moving averages come with it. Hit OK. And then we're simply gonna go right to the next chart, go to style, load style, and we just saved it right here. 233 tick and moving averages. Voila. Go down to the next one. Style, load style, 233 and moving averages. Thinkorswim is amazing. I love this platform. It makes it so user friendly. And uh, that's it, guys. I mean, looky there. And now, one thing I always, always stress whenever I work with individuals one on one is save your work. So go up here to the grid where you made the four grids. Go up here and go down to save grid as. And call it anything you want, guys. Anything you want. You can go four main markets, 233 tick. Whatever you would like, guys. Absolutely anything. Save it. That way, whenever you go up here to scroll around, like I have four main markets, it'll load up here. This is if you've got Thinkorswim. Other platforms offer saving opportunities, too. You notice the lines are just a different color. That's the only difference. And uh, so, yeah, go ahead and definitely save your work. That way you don't lose any of this, guys. Very important to save your work. Don't lose any of this on a, on a, on a kind of a mind, a uh, little bit of a mind clutter there. So so that's it. Let me, uh, let me go back here. I'll show you. So we got four main markets, 233 tick. This is what we just created. And looky there, we got some great things going on. So now what you can do is have this on one of your monitors and simply say, oh, look at the ES. Everything's pointing down. This is, this is trending pretty good at the time. The Russell, I can see a nice high-low pullback right to the 233. Got a little cluster, just wait for it to bounce up a little bit, and we'll take a pullback to the upside. This is just me perusing the market. As you have it zoned out, you can look here. Oh, we got a high, a low, about a 50% pullback where some support was. New resistance. Let's start looking for some rollover here. And, oh, possible double bottom here. So this is a great way to get a bird's eye view, if you were to say, at the market. 
and um, and just analyze. So then I know, hey, all right, I'm looking for such and such, maybe the Russell to bounce. So guess what? In Think or Swim, here's a little trick, guys. Go right here to where it says Russell 2000 or the name of the market and double click. Now that is cool. You can double click on it, zoom in just by clicking and dragging. So all I did there, let me go back. I just go to where, whichever one I want to click on, even if it's say the, the gold or the crude down here, where it says light sweet crude, you can either go to the blue right here, the little blue dot, and go to maximize cell grid, or just double click on the name and it'll blow it up. Thinkorswim has done amazing things to help you out. And then once you have it blown up, you can either look at this and go back to this little arrow here, and it'll go back to all the grids, or you can scroll through all four grids by these right and left arrows. Very, very user friendly and very cool. If you want to go back to all four, just hit the little curvy arrow and bam, back to it. So, video got a little bit long, guys, but I hope it helped you uh, set up your charts to get a uh, like a bird's eye view or just start to look at another monitor. So, if you guys ever you know, you always know what I'm looking at now. So I always have this on another monitor, and I can see, you know, are, are the trigger lines flat or are they trending? That is a big one for me. I like to be a little bit of a trend trader. If we're below the yellow line, the 200 uh, EMA, typically I want to only take shorts. If we're above it, typically I only want to take longs. It's kind of a rule of thumb. I will do some counter trend trading against that MA, but it would take a very, um, uh, it, it's a rare instance. Maybe if it's a, a bounce off of a major level here and we were able to take like, uh, here's, I can just flat out see an example right here. Um, you know, maybe we had a, a moving average, or not a moving average, but a previous uh, area of resistance up here. And then all of a sudden, we got resistance, and I seen it selling off, and we got a pullback here. There's a chance I could short something like this against it, but 95% of the time, I'm only going long above it and only going short below it. So um, that's it for now. If you guys got any questions, you can go ahead and write me an email, adam at directiontrader.com. I'm more than happy to help you with these charts. I'm pretty knowledgeable when it comes to think or swim. It's the only real major platform I've used for eight, nine years now. So. Um, if you have any questions, get a hold of me at adamatdirectiontrader.com. If not, I hope you enjoyed the video. Got a little bit long, but that's it. You guys have a good day.